Hey guys, uh, growing season 2023 is in the books, all right? So I need to get this off and um, give you a little update, all right? Stay tuned. Hey guys. Yeah, so we did some good things this year. We did um, some experiments here that we'll talk about in a second. Um, what I wanted to do before I take anything down here, uh, we're essentially, uh, what is it today? The 3rd of December, all right? So uh, this is essentially where we've got some frost or cold enough night that the plants are suffering. I took the last harvest inside so pictures right and um, yeah this is what's left and i didn't want to take the plants down because i wanted you to see what we did with the uh, leaning and what it did to the plants all right so let me take you in so that we can talk about that all right so if you recall we used this year the leaning method for growing the tomato all right and as you can clearly see, they've been <laughs> linked. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's what it looks like, you know, when we use those, uh, those things up here. All right. So one of the things I'm going to have to do, which uh, this year was a little bit tough, is I'm going to have to put something up, ahead, uh, up in the uh, eave here so that I can hook him up. As you can see, I had to take this plant here and hook it to my trellis because, you know, I didn't have enough hook up there to, to deal with, with the plants leaning. Because basically, if you look at this one here, which is essentially over my last bucket, as you can clearly see, there's one next to it, all right? They're coming way, way down from three buckets away. All right, and in this case, yep, so this one is going there, okay, and the next one is going over here. So they need a lot more room than I anticipated. So what I'm going to have to do next year is remove those two buckets here. Uh, if you recall, they were cucumbers, and the cucumbers were not happy in the greenhouse for some reason. I can't tell you why, you know, this is some research that I'm going to have to do and figure out, you know, what's going on. And, and don't mind the um, uh, powdery mildew that you see everywhere on the plants, all right? We're, we're at this time of year where the greenhouse is almost always closed. Uh, well, not almost always, always closed because the, the temperature is too low. And at, that, at this point, you know, there's no air circulation to make everything, um, you know, kind of get, deal with them, all right? So, Honestly, um, I'm not too, too worried about that because I didn't have any of that this summer because of the way we pruned the tomato, you know, we created a whole lot of airspace, you know, that, that made them work really well. All right, also let's talk about the varieties, all right? The San Marzano, who's over here, as you can see, just grew straight up. It doesn't like to be fell, fall, whatever. You know, it doesn't like this leaning type of uh, pruning. I will actually say, it, it, you know, that pruning essentially, you know, gave me seven tomato for the first arbor, uh, the first harvest. And you see what I done yesterday, you know, again, picture. Um, this, as soon as I let it be, you know, because once I saw that it wasn't super happy, I stopped pruning him, the, the, pruning it the same way. That's why you see that there's multiple, well, there we go. This is now all done, but there's multiple now branching that have happened. You know, it's not like that singular type of, you know, vine that we kind of cultured with the other ones. Once I let it go, it started producing again. So this one is a good candidate for the garden and not hydroponics. So, we're going to get rid of that one next year. Another thing that I had a lot of trouble with, which we didn't in the garden, we had that same variety growing in, in dirt in the garden, is are this uh, sweet 100 there, which are small cherry-sized tomato. 
The problem with them is not that they didn't produce, is that once they became red, they would essentially break open the following day, you know, maybe because of the amount of water available to them or whatever, because this is not a drought related or, you know, inconsistent watering situation. Water was basically flowing all the time. So that's not the issue. The issue really is I think they mature too quickly. You know, if within a day of being, you know, red and nice, you know, and, and appealing to eat, they start bursting open. You know, I'm again, not a good, good situation for this plant to be here. So we're probably getting rid of that also next year. Same, same thing happened with the yellow pear to a lesser extent, but you know, they are busting up, you know, anyway. So I'm not gonna grow small cherry tomatoes here anymore. We got, we got good, good success with the better boy. And uh, the one that performed the best is 4th of July. All right, so again, they were all variety that we bought to grow in the garden and not necessarily hydroponically. We just, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I didn't want necessarily to make this a production greenhouse, you know, so I didn't go for um, hydroponic seeds and stuff like that. So. That's one thing that's gonna change next year. So next year, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take four buckets and I'm gonna put tomatoes in them and I'm gonna buy tomatoes, uh, seeds that are hydroponic seeds. And we're gonna see what that does for us, all right? So that's with this system. Um, actually, I should show you something else. I had some issue with this system. One of the buckets ended up clogging and um, overflew and emptied my reservoir. Let me show you why. All right, so now that the system is off, you can see what I'm talking about here. All right, this is the second time. I actually took it out like twice already. So roots are finding their way from the buckets, even though they're supposed to be encased in this uh, mesh bag here. Roots found their way into the drainage pipe. So the clogging part happened because the, the half an inch here, okay, is, is, is too small. Now, I don't remember having that problem ever before. So what I'm gonna do next year, the four buckets will be um, outfitted with one inch pipe coming out. So the same thing as this year, okay, um, and that should solve that problem. <laughs> All right, pretty simple solution. Another thing that I had to do, which um, if you recall, I had put, you know, emitters, you know, down on, on these things, uh, on the feeds, right? So that I could regulate the amount of uh, nutrient that they were getting. The problem with the emitter is that they ended up clogging very regularly. Like every week I would come in and one or two of them wouldn't be working. Good thing I had two of them per bucket, okay? Uh, so, you know, when one was stopped working, you know, I could easily fix it and, you know, uh, make it work again. If you look down in the bucket there, you'll see that there's a bag. So basically I took one of these, okay? Paint, uh, paint bucket bag, right? And I put it around the pump and that made for a lot less clogging but it still wasn't ideal because it was still as you can see there because they're nutrient rich solution there's a lot of um, minerals that get built up and eventually clog the thing so the simplest thing i could come up with is just to have a um, not a hole you know just a, a straight you know fitting if you wish uh, so it's not even um, measuring anything, it's just flowing. All right, as you can see over here, the water is just coming out of it. There's nothing uh, magical or measured about it. It's just leaking water. So in the case of the feed system, the simpler solution, the better. And that's what I'm gonna do again next year. I'm just gonna have one of those. I'm gonna replace that pipe, remove the emitters, and just do a straight, you know, um, feed. All right, so enough with the tomatoes. I mean, let's move over to this side here. 
This system has been, uh, you know, as you can see in the pictures here, I've experimented quite a bit with it this year. You know, we had the strawberries, basil, Swiss chard. Um, the strawberry didn't like this too, too much. So those are gone. The Swiss chard and the basil did really, really well, actually way too well. Uh, what they ended up doing, they ended up clogging this this trough because I use a two by three um, uh, downspout to create my um, my trough here, and you know there's a bigger size, you know a four what is it four by five something like that three and a half by five I don't remember but you can look it up. Uh, this system was designed to do lettuce, so two by three is perfect for me. Once I put the other things in, they grew and they clogged it, ended up overflowing, you know, this trough, lost a lot of uh, juice in the, in the uh, nutrient solution here. And what ended up happening is that it starved my lettuce, you know, obviously, by the time I caught it, starved the lettuce from, from water anyway, everything dried up. That's why the system's been off for a little while here. So I took all of the Swiss chard and all that out. I'm not going to redo that this year, uh, just too much. I'm going to make this an, uh, an exclusive lettuce system, uh, which is what it was designed to be. You know, it's just I tried, tried to do stuff, right? So what we're going to do also is I'm going to provide some shade for it because in the summertime, the lettuce just doesn't grow. So I'm going to go and, uh, and research some cold, uh, some uh, warmer weather lettuce so that I can try to keep the system going. You know what I mean? So anyway, so that's with that. I'm probably going to reduce the size of it uh, because if I'm only going to grow lettuce, I don't need this many trough. And if I keep them this length, this means that I'm losing a couple of spots over there for peppers or other things, right? So that's the plan with this this year. All right. Over here, if you recall, we had a uh, infinite Kratky type of thing going on. Uh, link in the description on how I built it. Uh, it worked okay, right? I can't, I can't complain. It, it did its thing. I did lose a pepper uh, because of aphids, which also was recorded and documented in a video. And at the end of the day, you know, uh, I think many of the aphids ended up eating or starting to eat anyway the buds of basically all of them my first harvest of the pepper were really really bad you know i mean i had nothing uh, but i did have a second one which was not too too bad but because of the damage the plants stay small and whatever it wasn't a great success but it's not because of the system it's because of the aphids i should have caught it earlier i didn't anyway my bad uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to replace the system, though. Uh, I think I'm going to go back to a deep water culture or something along those lines. Because I had really great success with the deep water culture up there. And um, I'm not going to say that the Kratky didn't work. But in my mind, I kind of feel that in the Kratky, you know, you fill it. Nutrient gets absorbed by the plant as the water goes down, you know, the old Kratky thing. But the nutrient solution is never really replenished. Uh, and that to me means that the plant doesn't have all the nutrients that it can have, you know. So I think a more recirculating type system, I'm not going to go all the way to this type of system, but a system where the nutrient solution is somehow replenished, I think is, is a good idea for optimizing production, you know. So... One of the things that's going to happen there, I'm not going to redo the basil that I said up here, but because they were so successful and we love basil, you know, uh, I'm going to take two of those and put them in, in that system over there. So that way, when they grow, they're going to grow over there. They're going, not going to put shadows or anything. They're going to not, not going to clog this. Um, so it's going to be all general goodness. Uh, the other things I'm going to put there, uh, peppers. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Um, and just to give you an idea, uh, picture again, my uh, this is the last harvest of my jalapeno. So a single plant. Like I said, the first one didn't produce much, like I six, seven peppers. 
but the second harvest did really well, okay, as you can see. Um, yeah, so that I believe is the greenhouse. Um, the one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to ex experiment with the uh, clay pot eater, which I'm going to have a video for you about that. Because what I'd like to do here, if I can prevent it from freezing, okay, and I'm not going to say in the middle of February here, but if I could put that in here in March, there's probably a good chance that I'm going to extend my season by two, three weeks easily, okay? And um, that would be awesome. So we're going to do that. All right, other than that, you know, as you can clearly see, some plants have moved in there for the winter, and um, I need to take this down because they're done. And, um, yeah, so that's my update. All right, guys, end of season 2023. I'm going to share more of the garden space in 24 because we're doing a lot over there, and, and uh, so not everything is here. So... Um, that's my resolution anyway <laughs> all right hey guys um nice to see you again uh have fun and uh i'll see you in the next video all right thank you bye mm -hmm.